that frequency can carry the thought of your wealth. It acts as an amplifier and it drives mm. energy to the brain. We've done thousands and thousands of measurements. We've partnered with the HeartMath Institute to teach people how to create and sustain heart coherence. How do we do it? Well, besides going to your workshop, what's a simplified version? I'm sure it takes more time than... Well, it really doesn't. Oh. It really doesn't. It just requires getting still, closing your eyes, putting your attention on your heart, changing your breath so that you move into the present moment and when you slow your breathing down, you slow your brain waves down. When you slow your brain waves down, now you're accessing your autonomic nervous system. So then you train a person how to open their heart and feel an elevated emotion. And it takes a little practice. And just like a flower that, that takes time to bloom, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time. But if mm -hmm. you work in trading the resentment, the frustration or the impatience for gratitude, appreciation and thankfulness, and you keep at it, there'll come a moment where that system switches on and now you're feeling grateful for no reason at all. Right. That's, that's not a bad <laughs> thing because gratitude, the emotional signature of gratitude means something's happening to you, something has happened to you, yeah. you're receiving something or you just received something. So your body then, when you're feeling gratitude, is in the perfect state of receiving. Mm -hmm. So then that means then you'll accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to the emotional state of gratitude. Mm -hmm. If you're living in resentment, you're living in fear, you're living in, in, in patience, you could say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm with all you want, and that thought's gonna stop right at the brainstem and never make its way to the body because the because body's- your not feeling or because why? Because you're feeling resentment. Uh -huh. And that thought isn't, the, that thought is not consistent with the emotion of resentment. resentment has a different set of thoughts, right? In other words, once you start opening your heart, it begins to move into coherence. It begins to produce a measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide. Now that's frequency, that's energy. And all that energy, that frequency carries information, carries an intent. So then when you're feeling gratitude and your heart is open, you're broadcasting energy into the mm -hmm. field. A now, frequency. A yeah. frequency. You lay the intent of the thought of your health or your wealth. That frequency can carry the thought of your wealth. It can mm. carry the thought of your health. If you're suffering, you can't, the suffering does not carry, that energy does not carry the thought of your wealth. It carries a different set of thoughts. So then, so then we're teaching people how to self-regulate because if you're going to believe in that future that you're imagining with all of your heart, it better be open and activated right, right. and you better know how to self-regulate and you have to know the moment you disconnect from the energy of your future because of some circumstance in your life and you lose that feeling, if you're practicing it on a daily basis with your eyes closed, then the next level is to be able to open your eyes and do it right in the moment mm. and be able to self-regulate and change the, the frustration from some experience in your life back to the energy of your future. Now, that requires great awareness and great effort, but if you have a community of people that are practicing this on a daily basis and they're connected to their future because that's where their, their mind is, mm -hmm. um, they begin to want the future more than the emotions the of the past. So we've done enough measurements now, Lewis, to know that we can teach people how to do that and we have evidence that people can sustain it for 45 minutes to an hour. It's a skill now. They know yeah. that they know how to do it. So now they have brain coherence and heart coherence. Well, once the heart begins to become orderly and coherent, it acts as an amplifier and it drives mm. energy to the brain. So now the brain is getting more energy once the heart is open and then you're thinking a different set of thoughts and those thoughts produce different chemicals for you to feel more of that. And here comes uh, nitric oxide from oxytocin mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden your heart literally starts to swell. It literally begins to open up and there's more energy going there and now you're coming from a different level of mind. Right. When you have coherence in the brain and heart, you have a laser of energy and it could read information much better. You're living in stress and your brain is shifting its attention from one person to another problem to another thing to another uh, place to go. Each one of those things there's an assignment of neurological networks in the brain. So the arousal of the stress hormones drives the brain yeah. into this high frequency and you're trying to control and predict everything in your life and those 
your brain circuits are firing like a, like a lightning storm in the clouds. When your brain's incoherent, you're incoherent. And, mm -hmm. and you, can't, you don't have a signal. You're, you, you don't have a Wi-Fi signal. You're not connected to the field. How could, you, how could you connect to energy and information if your signal hasn't become orderly? Mm. So that when people synchronize their energy into coherence, they can synchronize to a possibility in the future. And the synchronicities that are feedback mm -hmm. from the environment are just a reflection of your energy. Mm -hmm. And that's the universe saying, follow the breadcrumbs, do it again, follow it again, do it again. And now all of a sudden the person's not waking up in the morning like, oh, I gotta meditate now to create my future. They're, they're kind of going like, I'm getting out of bed because I don't yeah. want the magic to end, right? right. They, wanna, they wanna sustain that state so that the old reality that they've lived in begins to transform into something new and because there's no longer a vibrational match with everyone and everything in their past, present reality, mm. there's a vibrational match to their future and mm. now their future is starting to give them signals. Do our, what's more powerful than our thoughts or our, our emotions and do our emotions change our thoughts or do our thoughts change our emotions? Yeah, the answer is yes. The answer is both. I mean. Um, thoughts uh, to me produce an electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings produce a magnetic charge in the quantum field mm. and how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life the thought sends the signal out now think about this and the feeling draws the event back so you mm. could have the intent that you want wealth you want health you want success that's your intent, that's your thought. But if you're waiting for the experience to happen, to feel it, then you're not drawing the experience to you because you're not feeling the emotion, right? So then teaching people once again how to balance their thoughts and feelings because you can, you can enter that cycle either place. Sometimes we do a meditation, we start opening our heart, we start elevating the body's energy, and then those emotions can drive certain thoughts of your future. Mm -hmm. Other times, you open your awareness, you create brain coherence, you have the vision of your future, you begin to emotionally experience it. However you wanna jump on that cycle, uh, and then sustain it, because the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you're drawing your future to you. So then, most people spend their lives, right? They we live in this realm called space-time, three-dimensional reality, and you move your body through space in three-dimensional reality, it takes time. Yeah. So everything, all your goals, all your dreams, all your visions, you're gonna have to get your body up and drag it through space every day to pay off that, you know, that home that's in your future, right? Right. When you create from the field instead of from matter, when you a vibrational match between your energy and some potential, and your thoughts and feelings are coherent, now you are going to begin to collapse time and space or the experience is gonna be drawn to you. Now, now you're the vortex to your destiny and now you don't have to go anywhere to get it because you're not playing by the rules of three-dimensional reality, you're playing by the rules of energy and the quantum. Mm. What happens to your immune system when you do that? Well, it turns out we've done an experiment. Just 10 minutes a day, three times a day with 120 people trading resentment, frustration, fear, for gratitude, mm -hmm. appreciation, and thankfulness. Measuring their immune response, the, the chemical immunoglobulin A, your primary defense against bacteria and viruses, the best flu shot you'll ever get lives right. within, innately within you. Turns out when you're frustrated, when you're impatient, when you're fearful, the immune system dials down because you're an emergency. It's not, it's, all your energy is going for some threat in your outer world, there's no energy in your inner world for growth and repair. But how do you turn that around so then as people begin to open their heart, can that chemical begin to, to um, elevate? Mm -hmm. Four days, 50% change in the 120 people. Their, their IGA levels went up 50% in four days. Wow. That's, your body's immune system is now upregulating genes that are making proteins and immunoglobulins and, and antibodies that you don't need a flu shot. In other words, your inner state is greater than your outer world. Mm -hmm. So then, just by doing that, we now know that your immune system is going to get stronger by the same means. Take 120 people or 50 people and measure 7,500 gene regulations, okay? In four days, two genes that suppress cancer growth and tumors 
are activated and upregulated. The genes that stimulate stem cells that go to damaged tissues and repair them, upregulate them. The gene for oxidative balance is upregulated. Anti-cancer, anti-aging, mm. anti-heart disease, anti-stroke, anti-neurodegenerative, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. Just your body's naturally doing this. The gene for neurogenesis, the growth of new neurons in response to novel experiences and learning. This is four days. The mm. gene switches on. Uh, the, the gene for uh, more balance in the pituitary and the pancreas, the gene for the microtubules of the cells, the, the, little, the little fibers that respond to energy and frequency. Right. So in four days, we now know that you can change your genetic destiny if you just practice the inner work. We have research to show that 60 days of meditation, five days a week, will lengthen your life. The right. telomeres, the little shoestrings on the end of your DNA get longer. That means your biological age is changing. So we, we have the evidence now to show people what's possible. We have brain scans that, that are so outside of normal that when neuroscientists see them, they're blown away because the amount of energy that's in the brain during this transcendental moment is uh, hundreds of times outside of normal. Wow. I mean, you can't make your brain do that. Something is happening to you and that person's having a transcendental moment. And we mm. now know that we can predict it, and we now that know that we can induce it. So then there's the evidence there. Mm -hmm. Then you take our community and you see people with stage four cancer, with Parkinson's disease, with myasthenia gravis, with, with lupus, with MS, with uh, brain injuries, uh, uh, with rare genetic disorders, with uh, vertigo, uh, tinnitus, uh, all, uh, kidney failure, all kinds of health conditions come to a week-long event, and then at the end of that event, they make significant strides in getting beyond the emotions of the past. Now think about this. The science says that the environment signals the gene, that's epigenetics. Mm -hmm. The end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion. So as long as you're living by the same emotion every single day, you're signaling the same gene in the same way. And if that gene is related to a survival emotion, a stress hormone, then you're down-regulating the gene and you're creating disease. So when the person trades that emotion and really breaks free from the chains of their past, and now they're feeling an elevated emotion, well, now they're dialing down the gene for MS mm -hmm. and they're up-regulating the gene for health and balance. And so the person, will you'll say to them, where's the disease? Well, I'm not the same person. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the, and, and the side effect of that is a transformation in healing. So. The funny thing about it is the person who has the healing is not talking about the healing. Whether it's blind people seeing, deaf people hearing, hearing, we have crazy evidence now. What they're talking about is how amazing they feel mm -hmm. because they're refreshed, they're, 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 they got a new lease on life. Yeah. And so now we have evidence in our research and that silences the critic to, to show that what's possible for people. And now we have evidence and testimony that we have evidence where people will stand on the stage and say, hey, I broke my back in three places. I, I haven't been able to stand up straight. I came into this event hunched over. I couldn't lay down. And now this guy's jumping around on the stage. He's laying on his back. He's touching his toes. He's, mm -hmm. he's, you can tell. I mean, this is, is you, he's, he's having his moment. We freed, we changed somebody. Yeah. Someone with Parkinson's disease can't swallow, mm. can't chew, can't blow her nose, can't stand up. One moment. One moment, the next thing you know, <clears throat> she's blowing her nose, chewing, swallowing. We changed her body, we changed her life, and we changed her future. And she doesn't look like a movie star, and she doesn't look like she's a vegetarian, and she doesn't look like she's buffed. She just looks like a normal person. Now the person in the audience who's watching that, and looking at this person, and seeing that they're no different than them, it just starts to mm. cause them to think, if someone else can do it, I can do it. So. You see the person with the stage four cancer that got the, you know, the voodoo curse that they have three months to live. And now they have no evidence of cancer in their body and they're standing on the stage telling wow. that story and somebody in the audience is checking her out going, I have the same condition and if she can do it, I'm gonna step right in that footprint and I'm gonna do it wow. the way she did it. And all of a sudden, you start seeing this change in the community in a week long event because once there's a breakthrough, right? I mean, it's like a four minute mile. That's it's it, it's, it's yeah. in the field, you yeah. know? And, but it's not only in the field, you're seeing evidence in three-dimensional reality. Yeah. And, and evidence is the loudest voice right now.